for me, camera rigging is a series of problem solving. Out of the box, the Pocket 6K comes with a number of unsolved issues. And though I feel like I've built a successful camera system that has served me well filming weddings for the last year, more issues have arisen, so it's time for another series of problem solving. This is the rig I've currently been shooting on. I've got the Pocket 6K here. Um, I've got the 18 to 35 on it. The Pocket 6K is in a full tilt cage with a top handle and mounted to the top handle, I have the Atomos Shinobi and the whole system is being powered by these Power Extra multifunctional batteries. The reason this rig has been really nice is because I can take this and go handheld or I can stick it on my Steadicam or on my tripod thanks to this Manfrotto plate on the bottom. And it's just super easy to switch from, from Steadicam to tripod handheld. It's super easy and very functional, very practical, very versatile. And this is what I've been shooting weddings on for the past year or so. And though I really like this rig and I, I think it's functional, I think it's versatile and I've gotten really good at using it, there are a couple of glaring problems that are becoming bigger problems the further I go into my career filming weddings. The first problem is the battery life. I really do love these Power Extra multifunctional batteries. You've got a USB at the bottom, you've got a DC at the top, and the DC is what I use to run to a dummy battery to the Pocket 6K. And I can get about an hour and a half or two hours off of one of these Power Extra batteries. And that hour and a half, sometimes two hours, uh, that is not just leaving the camera on. That's turning the camera off between takes most of the time, uh, on and off shooting. So it's not even like just leaving the camera on for an hour and a half. I have five of these and I use all of them on an eight hour wedding day. And a lot of times I'm already starting to recharge them on an eight hour wedding day. So that should tell you how fast these burn up. And for, for those of you who are curious, at a full charge, one of these things is at about 8.2 volts and it'll run the camera technically down to 6.2 volts. Uh, I've noticed my camera usually shuts off around 6.4 volts. On the Pocket 6K, on the little battery symbol, you can tap that to go from percentage to voltage. And I would highly recommend using voltage because you can know uh, using the Blackmagic manual, how far your camera will run, which is technically 6.2 volts through the, uh, through the battery input, if you're using a dummy battery, or I believe it's 10.8 volts through the 12 volt input. The second big issue is when I'm using the Pocket 6K on my Flycam Red King. And the issue is I can't pull focus and stabilize at the same time. I talked about this some in my last videos about the Flycam Red King. Honestly, it's not been as big of an issue as I thought it was gonna be. Usually I can just set focus, do my movement. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't do as many like push in movements or pull out movements. If I am, if it's like a landscape shot, I'm bumping up my aperture anyway. So it has been really doable, but this problem really occurs during like the send off. Uh, me and the photographer are typically tracking backwards with the couple and the couple never stays the same distance away. Um, and so that can result in some sketchy hit or miss type of filmmaking, which I'm not a fan of. So for me, that is the first part of the problem solving process identifying the problems. You can't solve the problems if you don't know they're there, if you don't identify them and nail them down. So I've identified the problems and then after I identified the problems, I started trying to think of a solution. The first thing that came to my mind was to mount a V-mount plate behind the Pocket 6K's screen like I've seen a lot of other people successfully do. Uh, but that only solves the battery issue. It doesn't solve the manual focus issue. Another solution that did cross my mind and quickly left my mind was getting a different camera that has autofocus, uh, but I'm not doing that. I love the Pocket 6K. I love the quality I can get with it. I love using Blackmagic RAW. Uh, I just, I really love the camera and I would rather engineer my way around the problems than just run away from the problems. Because that's what heroes do. 
Then my mind went outside the box. I started to think about, you know, the, not just modifying the rig I had, but like, you know, reinventing the wheel, getting outside of the box. And out of curiosity, I went on Amazon and I started looking at the DJI RS2. And the first thing that caught my eye, other than the fact that it's a beautiful, beautiful gimbal, is the fact that it has that little focus wheel on the front. I did some research to confirm, but that focus wheel meant that I would be able to control focus while holding the gimbal and stabilizing the camera. And that would be a game changer. That would seamlessly solve my first problem. And to solve the battery life issue, you know, I'm gonna slap a, I'm gonna slap a V-mount battery on that thing and give the Pocket 6K the power it deserves. More power, Robert. And I was pretty confident I could figure out a way to mount a V-mount on the DJI RS2. So I had some other things going on. I was working on some other stuff, uh, but I considered it. It was in the back of my mind for a while. And after considering it for a few weeks, I pulled the trigger and got the DJI RS2 combo kit. The main reason I got the combo kit was because it came with that focus motor, which would, once again, help me seamlessly focus and stabilize at the same time, at least in theory. Once it got here, I started playing around with it. I balanced my Pocket 6K on there with the 18 to 35. I took the cage and everything off. It was really just the Pocket 6K and the 18 to 35, and it balanced fine. Once I had a feel for the RS2 and I had played around with it enough and knew what I was working with, I started searching on Amazon for different parts that could help me build it into a functional rig. Essentially, I needed a way to mount my monitor so that I can see what I'm filming because the Pocket 6K screen, once again, is very dim. And I needed a good way to mount that V-mount battery onto the RS2. I got on Amazon, I started searching around, I started going through uh, Tilta's parts, I started going through Small Rig's parts, and I kept my mind open in case there were other solutions that I hadn't thought of. Before long, I found a monitor mount that could utilize one of the, the RS2's NATO rails. So, added that to my cart. Then I started looking for a V-mount solution like maybe something that could utilize the other NATO rail and mount it beside the handle of the gimbal or something. I really wasn't sure, but I started searching around. And then I came across this part by Tilta and I was like, not exactly sure what it was. And like, I don't know if that's a, that's a NATO clamp or if it clamps onto one of the arms of the gimbal. And oh my goodness, that is genius. Of course, Tilta has come up with a solution to put a V-mount under the camera to act as a counterweight to the camera. That is Tilta for you. Take my money, please. But it was actually kind of expensive, like $170 kind of expensive. And I happened to come across a video on YouTube by this guy named Will Ram, who came out with a solution that does the same exact thing, but he did it way cheaper. It only required two parts that were both very affordable. The first was a base plate counterweight adapter by Tilta, and the second one was a V-mount plate by Nicey Rig. I don't know who named that. Together, they cost about $47 as opposed to $170, and that just made the Dutch half of my heart sing. I, I still think the Tilta part is, is really cool though, just for the record. Oh, also, it's worth mentioning that if you do rig your battery like this underneath the camera on the gimbal, you're gonna need to come up with a different place to put your Raveneye transmitter if you are using the Raveneye transmitter. Um, personally, I have no need for it right now since I'm a one-man crew anyway, so that's not a problem for me. Dude, it's a fly. Get out of here. I got him. I got him. Yes. For the V-mount battery itself, I went with none other than Power Extra. I've had a really good experience with our batteries, both the NPF style and Canon LPE6 batteries. So Power Extra, if you want to sponsor somebody. Since I knew it was going under the camera, I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to interfere with the roll axis motor on the RS2. I'm pretty sure it's the roll axis motor. It's the one in the back. So I went with the 95 watt hour V-mount battery by Power Extra because it's skinnier, but theoretically it will still have plenty of power. And also I didn't want to weigh down the rig any more than I needed to. I also ordered a new HDMI cable, which is coiled to make sure it had enough springiness 
to, to move around as the gimbal moves around because I didn't want that, that cable putting too much tension on it when the gimbal's trying to work and do its thing. And of course I had to get a DTAP cable that would power the 12 volt input on the Pocket 6K and I made sure that one was coiled as well. Once again, those coiled cables keep things flexible and personally, I think they're way easier to manage. So now I just had to wait until the parts arrived. And when they arrived, I put the whole rig together and it was beautiful. Like you cannot look at this and tell me that's not beautiful. I mean, look at the co look at the color scheme. We got like dark gray and red. It looks good and it's easy to use. The auto tune is just, like you just auto tune it and you're ready to go. It's look at that. She's handling the whole thing. This this rig weighs about 11 and a half pounds and. A lot of that is right up top right there. The satisfaction of something working exactly how you planned it is immensely satisfying. So I, I don't know if this is just me, but I think it's awesome that I was able to put this together and I've had extremely few problems so far. I mean, I know it's a pretty simple rig, so there's not a lot that can go wrong. That's a good thing. Uh, but I was just expecting problems because that's usually just the way it goes with uh, at least in my experience, rigging out cameras. I took the rig outside for a while and I used it for about an hour outside yesterday. And the whole experience of using it was pretty incredible, except for my arms, they were hurting a little. I was amazed how easy it was to use. The trigger and the focus control wheel up front right here, uh, they, they're extremely effective and they work exactly how I hoped they would. The focus control, I can focus right there just like that. You can hold down that trigger to hold the gimbal in one position. And that's super handy when you're filming and you need to just keep it pointing one direction. And you say you've got it and you've been filming and it's like that, you just double tap that trigger, boom, brings it back front and center, super handy. And I moved my microphone. I don't have it on there right now because once again, I'm filming with it right now, but I moved it to the, the cold shoe on my left side of the tilt cage and that actually works perfectly. It gives it just enough room for that rear motor to go past it when you go into low mode or underslung mode or whatever you wanna call it. And, and that's awesome because I can never really get low shots on the fly cam. Okay, let's talk power again because I tested this V-mount yesterday and I don't, I know it's like, it's, it's twice as much voltage and everything, but just logically in my mind, I was like, this is about the size of two of these, maybe a little bigger than, bigger than twice as big. So I should, you know, I get like an hour and a half with one of these. Maybe I'll get like a solid three hours out of one of these. I put my camera on, I, I, I set it recording in 6K, 12 to one, 24 frames per second and it recorded for three hours and 45 minutes and it still has 14 volts left. That's crazy. The camera will run down to 10.8 volts and it started out at 15.15. I believe it started at 15.8. It only went down two volts in three hours and 45 minutes and it can go down another three volts. Like, so is this thing gonna run for like seven hours? I mean, I, I might actually be able to get through a whole wedding day with one of these, maybe, which is insane. I'm still gonna buy another one either way, but like, that's crazy. So it's kind of cool because the Pocket 6K finally has the power it deserves and needs to run properly and efficiently. Like yesterday when I was testing it out outside, that's probably the first time I've ever used the Pocket 6K and not really thought about the power. Like I just keep glancing down, I'm like, oh yeah, it's at 15.5 volts now. And it has been for the past 20 minutes. It hasn't even moved. You know, like I literally just left the camera on the whole time and I didn't have to turn it off between takes and stuff. And I imagine on a wedding day, it'll be the same, which is awesome because that means I'm ready to film at any given moment and the gimbal's battery is supposed to last 12 hours. So 
Battery wise, this thing is awesome. It is worth mentioning that I am running the monitor off of a smaller NPF style battery. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get out of that because I've never run the monitor by itself off its own battery, but I'll figure it out. And if the monitor dies while I'm doing something important, it's usually not a huge deal because I can get by with the monitor on the pocket 6K. Anyways, I am super happy how functional and versatile this thing already is. And I can't wait to master it, push it to its limits, and ultimately use this thing to help me capture weddings better or whatever kind of work I'm doing in the future. But right now, this thing is, I'm setting this thing up for weddings and I think it's gonna help me capture weddings a lot better. And I don't usually ask this, but if you liked this video, if you found it helpful or entertaining, please hit the like button so more people can see this video. It really does help me out. And I will be leaving affiliate links to every single piece of gear that is on this rig in the description. Affiliate links, if you don't know, basically I get paid a small commission at no extra cost to you. Uh, so it's not costing you any more, but I appreciate it if you do use those links because you're supporting my channel and you're supporting my career. So thank you. Speaking of gear, I may do another video where I build this out step by step instead of just giving you kind of an overview and just showing you like the end, the end product like I've done in this video. So if you're interested in a video like that, um, leave a comment below. I probably make it either way, but just let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's been a lot of fun to make and I will see you in the next one. I'm going to go outside with this, play around with it some more. <laughs> this thing's awesome.